going to Springfield. Springfield? Yeah. It's really funny though. <laughs> okay, so the guidebook seemed to, to say, <laughs> what did it say about the put in? In summer, this sigh is also used for seeking full suntans. Full suntans. Hmm. So we weren't quite sure what that. I don't know, it just seemed like a weird phrasing. <laughs> so the, this is the put in. Notice the second. Uh, all right, slight change of the put in spot. We tried to go to Glass Bar. Yes. Tried to go to Glass Bar Landing. Apparently, it's a nude beach owned by the Nature Conservancy. Nature. <laughs> and it's closed, all chained up. So maybe they're full. Um, so we switched to Island Park, just down in the town of Sutherland, and I think that'd be an ideal spot for the race to start. So we're gonna uh, portage gear down to the river and see what the put-in looks like here at Sutherland. It's, you know, it's, it's recon for us. We'll we're see. We're in Springfield. Springfield? Yeah. Not Sutherland. No. Springfield. We're in Springfield. <laughs> Just outside of Eugene. Just outside of Eugene. <laughs> Thanks. The nature. Yeah. You can't touch the natural air. The natural air. Okay, we did a quick uh, recon of the area. This looks like the best spot. Um, pretty bony. Um, there's a kind of an elevated, you know, kind of flat water section and the river carves uh, the inside corner here. So we may have to drag the boat and we've got the slingshot 222. So definitely taking a careful look at where to put in to make sure we can minimize any dragging. <laughs> um, so I think if we put in here, we'll have a bit of a portage to the put in, but I think for a race, this would actually be an ideal spot to have boats lined up and going from here. Whether it's in high or low water, this is probably the best spot for this location. Well, we'll see. Hey. Hey, we should have a bite of some delicious. Side a little bit so I can pull it over this way, but uh, lace it up a bit further first. What's the word, Lucy? We are ready. We are ready. All right, hugs. Oh. If you go in, just float on your back until we get together, okay? You're not going, it'll just, just so we've talked about it. Yeah. Ow. That was a hard hit. Just need to get over there in a better line with it. So it's a little splashy. Nice job. Nice job, kid. Huh. Just uh, keep that power so going, you're doing great. Good 
Yeah, that was a pretty good amount of splashiness. The trick, the trick though, is just what you did. Stay in the water, keep paddling. Don't go, you know, like getting real nervous and reaching out or like putting your arms up in the air. You did great. You kept after it and the boat did its job. It took on water, but we kept floating, right? <laughs> we got some water there. <laughs> yeah, it all came like fresh. Yeah, thank you. Rushing right back into this. Yeah, so going to the right is way too shallow and then you gotta crank a turn and not quite sure where the best spot here is. Looks like maybe here. Oh, she's a little shallow. Nicely done. just a little bit and with a canoe that's not great all right well we'll just stop for a quick restroom break uh, get some new batteries for the GoPro and go over maps get a sense of where we are we're at Marshall Island very obvious it's marked <laughs> on shore, so nice way to uh, reorient ourselves. <sighs> well, we're just remarking how much River Ready, oh, how much the river feels like the Gulcana, another great western river. Upstream breeze, ready. Passed a couple campers on nice gravel bar sites. Too bad you can't have campfires. Man, it'd be so nice. Yeah. But this fall, this fall, right? <clears throat> Ready. Up. Yeah, you could. Nothing. 
such a nice river trip so far. Starts off pretty hairy um, in the, in, at least in low water. I don't know what, the, what this is like, uh, of course, with more water. I think with more water, it'd just be pushy and a lot of fun. But in the conditions we've got, it's definitely below the mean um, watermark. Um, we were smacking around and uh, it was a little painful. Um, I gotta check out the boat when we get to camp. But um, super fun for a race. Oh my goodness, what a blast. And, and for that first part, first 10 miles or more, you're right there in the thick of different um, urban areas. And so people could be all along the shores. Super cool. And then, then from there you transition out to kind of farm country and it feels like, feels like we're on the Gulcana in Alaska. Um, just gorgeous western river, um, low, low terrain all around, but you can't see, you know, really much out of the river. So it's just, I don't know, I, I like it. Um, lots of um, strainers, lots of pushy, um, you know, sweeping turns that you gotta really be on your, on your game, which is like, I don't know, I mean, for my money, that's, uh, that's some of the best canoeing stuff there is. Super fun. Looking forward to determining where we're going to stop for camp. I think we're going to kind of look at a time versus a distance um, and then just settle into camp, reading, journaling, the good stuff. I know I'm the most of help. Okay, we checked out Irish Bend uh, for a campsite. The, the guidebook says this is the best camping on the downriver trip, but the sign in, you know, at the spot says no camping. Um, so I think we're going to go with the sign. It looks nice, although there's a road to it, so I suppose for, for the race it would be fantastic. Road right to it, public access, uh, but for camping, um, you know, who knows how long you're going to have people driving up and, and how secure your stuff is going to be while you're sleeping in a different world. So we're going to push to the other side of uh, Irish Bend and see if maybe there's a more low-key spot to tuck in. We scouted out... Um a better landing so we're um, gonna get all the gear out of the boat and um, get all sorted and then we'll show you what's gonna happen next dad is taking the food stuff where he needs to go and um, I'm gonna get some gear the gear goes over here next to the boat And then over there, we're gonna have tent stuff.
fantastic night in the tent. Really nice. Listening to fish, osprey, and a few eagles down the way. Osprey. Uh, Lucy slept really well. That was not me too. So calm. Well, I gotta get some coffee going. Looking forward to another day of paddling, longer day of paddling. Yeah, great river. Such a mellow spot. I think. Yeah. The only thing that would make this any better would be if you can have a, you know, a little campfire, right? you know, a gravel bar campfire, such a powerful thing. I get that it's overall risky, I think, on a gravel bar with someone who don't know what they're doing, but the risk is that. Uh, the risk of the Yahoo factor, I suppose, is just too high, obviously. <laughs> Such a similar experience. It's interesting because this Willamette River Trail has been odd. I don't have to really be intentional about it because I've got cell service the entire way. Carriers taking off. Oh, no, oh, that's a ag sprayer. All right, yeah, that's an air tractor, <laughs> um, biplane air, air tractor about to spray. Some of the large fields. Man, big fish jumping. Final, final tie downs. I think everything is set to go. I'm gonna do a quick sweep of camp, and then we're off for day two. Looking forward to seeing what today's travel offers. Hopefully, more of the same, but uh, less, less unexpected uh, rock garden bashing.
area. This is where we're intending to camp. Hopefully it has what we need. Okay, we're in campsite hunting mode for Luckamute State Natural Area. And we are looking for it. You got it. We think it's going to be around the point here to on the back side. There'll be kind of a dried out spot like this, a gravel bar on the back side of this area. If not, we got to push a bit further because this is pretty uh, kind of steep and green, which makes for not great camping. Okay, we are looking. How's that? It hurts. It hurts to stand. Okay, we uh, we think we have we think we found it. Yeah, there's a marker. So we're gonna go do some recon. Okay, we're gonna Bruce is holding the boat for a sec. I'm gonna go check it out. Let's see what we got. Well, we've got a tent site here potentially. Certainly set up down here. Um, oh, nice. Up here as well. In a flat spot, we have evidence of camp. So we... <laughs> definitely been enjoying um, just checking this, this whole area out. Um, the water trail has been fantastic. So for example, here's every now and then, I don't think we've seen one of these for 20, 30 miles, but you get these signs and heck, it'd be hard to have seen this from the river. Uh, Lucky Mute 108 is the river mile we put in at 185. Wanted to put in at 187, but the access was closed. Uh, Nature Conservancy has it, um, has it uh, chained, so. Um, Oh, interesting. So there's a there are porta potties. Huh. Um, a lot more space back in here. Even a picnic table and fire ring. I wonder if that makes it legit to have a fire, they say, in an approved fire fire bin. Um Looks like this must be the some kind of access. Yeah, two track access here for whatever staff come in and do whatever they do. Uh, but there are two porta potties. So that's something. Oh, let's see. There are, there's a sign on the, on the fire. I'm guessing it says, don't even think about having a fire here right now. Okay, so yeah, no fires. Interesting, I don't think we'll set up in here, it's just too, too far from the river and nobody else is here. So it looks like we've got uh, plenty of room and access to whatever we need. Okay. All right, Lucy, what's next? We're at, we're at our site. We're going to um, unpack everything and get our tent set up. Cool. Mm -hmm. Organize it. So what goes where? How do we do this thing? Um, gear goes with the boat. And food stuff goes away from the tent. And the tent stuff goes where the tent is going to go. And we go wherever we want. Yeah. <laughs> All right, let's do this thing. It's 
It's been a long day. Put, in the, put on the water at 9 a.m. Paddle to 5.30. Really no stops um, of any, <laughs> um, any sort. Quick bathroom break. Um, other than that, everything else done on the water. So another, another solid day. Um, I, I can look at the mileage. I think it's just shy. Just, I, don't quote me yet, but I think it's just shy. 50 miles. Definitely slower water today, however. So 35 yesterday. Uh, with slightly less time to do it. Um, 50 today. Definitely the difference is time, a, a little bit of time, but um, experience. Once again. And this one is certainly proving um, once again just, just such a pivotal opportunity. Um, setting out you know, ceremonies, rites of passage at different ages for each of our kids. And, and, you know, very much encourage all of you to do the same thing. It doesn't matter if you haven't started already, start now. Come up with something within the next six months, next year, uh, different ages. Not every year. It needs to be special. So these, you know, kind of markers. And so for us, it's at age 10. It's a multi-day um, winter camping trip um, with their mom. And then age 13, multi-day river trip with me. 15 is a pretty epic of, uh, of some sort. And that, that's, that's pretty well the, that's the coming of age rite of passage, 15. So 10, 13, 15. Other experiences beyond that for sure. And I think something that I've said to others is you, we can't just throw things, throw kids or people at huge adventures, you know, out, out of the blue. So. Those are things that need to be built over time. And so for our family, it's been part of being engaged in these uh, outdoor and, you know, uh, resiliency and adverse, uh, resiliency building and adverse situations to build that sense of comfort in how to deal with the basics, how to figure out what we're capable of, at least on some level, and to gain experience over time. But if you haven't done that to this point, once again, start now. Um, the the greatest, greatest excuse and the worst excuse is, well, I, I, I wish I would have. Um, sure. Um, you know the saying, you can wish in one hand and, well, if you don't know the saying. But take the opportunity now. That's that. No hurry. Especially if once you get in, we're grounded. I'm pretty good here. You're floating right. Yeah. Yeah, I can feel the pull of the river. Good. Where is he? Let's get out of here. All right, so let's. Uh, I'm gonna kind of pull backwards here, so we're a bit out of the current. And then we're gonna charge to the kind of close to the island. No, we'll follow that V there. See the V? It's just in front of us there. Oh yeah. But I just I didn't want to be scraping along that super shallow stuff right there. All right, let's go ahead and forward. Mm -hmm. 
Yesterday we went through a uh, part of the river that was not moving at all. So we were paddling as hard as we could to just make five miles an hour, which was our lowest speed limit that we were going to be going the whole day unless we were stopping. Which is very hard. We just went past a ferry crossing and it looked like the boat was uh, getting repairs on it and it looked like it could carry cars across the river. Oh yes, um, I made an inside joke about um, the natural hills because dad said, oh look there's some hills and it was just a big pile of gravel. <laughs> and uh, I said, oh yeah, they're natural hills. Before he, like we, when we just noticed that they were, it was a big pile of gravel. And so now that's been our inside joke. So whenever we see hills, we see we say natural hills and things that look like hills. Yeah. Very funny. Yeah, it's very funny. Make fun of your old dad. Yeah. 